Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay, and Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair bring you Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden. for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks, written by Al Lewis. Well, Tuesday, January 3rd, marked the end of the holidays, and teachers and pupils all over the country returned to their various halls of learning. Our Miss Brooks, who teaches English at Madison High School, was discussing her vacation with her landlady at breakfast last Tuesday. I guess vacations are necessary sometimes, Connie. But now I suppose you're looking forward to returning to dear old Madison High with considerable enthusiasm. Yes, indeed, Mrs. Davis. With all the enthusiasm of a sailor returning to his dear old submarine after a two-week vacation on Bally Bally. <laughs> you get back into the swing in no time, Connie. Is Walter Denton picking you up this morning? Yes, he is, and I hope he's on time. Our beloved principal is designated today as Board of Education Day. Oh, what sort of ceremony is Mr. Conklin planning? Well, Mr. Stone, the head of the board, will be there for his annual oiling. <laughs> and Mr. Conklin will have the whole school lined up on the campus. Some of the students will even march past Mr. Stone carrying the flag. Well, it can't do any harm, Connie. The board might decide to get you teachers a raise in the coming year. I hope so. Then maybe next year we'll be strong enough to carry the flag. <laughs> I'll get it. Be right there. I'll take the dishes into the kitchen. All right, Mrs. Davis, and thanks for breakfast. Good morning, Walter. It's more than that, Miss Brooks. This is the morning when the glorious gates of learning fling open anew. When the tantalizing aroma of chalk and pencil shavings beckons us all, teachers and pupils alike, to join hands and midst the clanging of bells come gaily skipping back to the black hole of Calcutta. <laughs> Why, Walter, I didn't know you had it in you, and I wish you'd put it back. <laughs> you did have a nice vacation, didn't you? Oh, sure I did, Miss Brooks. Uh, that is, up to last night. And then it was practically ruined by Mr. Conklin. He ordered me to write an editorial for the Madison Monitor on what the Board of Education means to me. Did you write it? Well, sure I did. Well, you know what a tyrant old Marblehead can be when it... I mean, Mr. Conklin can be when you cross him. But as a believer in freedom of the press, I really gave that Board of Education both barrels. Walter, this is a new year. Don't you think one barrel would have been enough? Well, giving us Monday off after New Year's Day and then making us go to school Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday is downright sadistic. Well, it's better than not having Monday off, isn't it? Well, sure, but it's not as good as having the rest of the week off, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm with you there, Walter. It would also be nice if they gave us February and March off. But that isn't the way the board works. Well, sometimes I doubt if they work at all. But, but it's all in this editorial, Miss Brooks. Here, I told Mr. Conklin you'd proofread it and bring it into his office this morning. Me? Well, sure. Hey, you're a faculty advisor to the school paper, aren't you? Oh, and don't be nervous about handing it to him, Miss Brooks. Just toss it on his desk. I can only do that if you'll agree to do something for me. Oh, what's that, Miss Brooks? Notify my next of kin. <laughs> Look, Walter, Mr. Conklin wants to start the year off with a spirit of cooperation. You'd better destroy this literary Frankenstein. Oh, I couldn't do that, Miss Brooks. But I'll think it over on the way to school and maybe amend some of my statements. Fine. Now, I'll just slip on my coat and we can get going. Oh, swell. My pal Stretch is waiting out in the car and he's pretty brought down. Stretch Snodgrass? What's the matter with him? Oh, you know what a great athlete Stretch is. He can pick up any sport in a second but he can't seem to absorb much with his brain. He's afraid that during the holidays he forgot everything he learned all term. You know what I mean? I know exactly what you mean, the alphabet. <laughs> Go ahead, Stretch. Tell Miss Brooks what's bothering you. She might be able to help you out. I'll certainly try, Stretch. What's your immediate problem? Everything. Good. As long as you've got it localized, I can help you. Well, I mean everything at school, Miss Brooks. You see, I just got to stay eligible for basketball. Mr. Boynton says I got to take a biology test pretty soon. 
And I forgot so much during our vacation, I'm afraid I'm just not no good at no biology no more. <laughs> Stretch, it is incorrect to use a double negative in the sentence. You just used four of them. <laughs> oh, then what I said was okay, huh? <laughs> I'm sure glad I didn't forget none of my English like I forgot about my animals in biology. Gosh, I used to know my animals like I know my A, B... My A, B... C's. <laughs> I was right about the alphabet. Yeah, I guess you were. Oh, go on, Stretch. Tell Miss Brooks some more about the test. Well, I think it's going to be mostly about birds and monkeys and stuff like that there. What where? <laughs> I gotta know the names of the different kind of baboons, which I used to know real good, but I forgot. Well, don't worry about it, Stretch. If you want me to, I'll meet you after school and review your lessons with you. Oh, that'd be keen, Miss Brooks. Gosh, I'll bet even the baboons know the names of all the other baboons. Well, don't worry about that either. If you'll just concentrate and spend the next couple of years studying, you'll be as smart as any other baboon. <laughs> I've summoned you to my office, Miss Brooks, to inform you of the fact that at 1 o'clock, Mr. Stone is due to arrive. So promptly at 12.55, the students and faculty will line up outside between the old cannon and the flagpole. Yes, sir. Then I will greet Mr. Stone and read aloud the editorial, which is to appear in the next issue of the Madison Monitor. Oh, the editorial. I am the... not finished, Miss Brooks. <laughs> the editorial is called What the Board of Education Means to Me and was written by Walter Denton. Now, as you know, I am not overly fond of young Denton, but as my daughter Harriet pointed out to me, he does get off some good editorials. He gets off some pips. <laughs> but, Mr. Conklin, I he don't... He said you'd deliver this one to me after proofreading it, Miss Brooks. May I have it, please? Have it, please? Uh, but, Mr. Conklin, I haven't got it, and neither has Walter. He told me he lost it on the way to school today. Lost it? That's out of the question. He's just trying to delay... Mr. Conklin, if you're going to use an editorial as a welcoming speech, you should write it yourself. Me? Of course. You're a master of the editorial form. Why, even your interclass communications are sheer poetry. They are? <laughs> Certainly they are. You sit right down at your desk, Mr. Conklin, and start creating. Well, I do have a way with words, I suppose, yes. Yes, I'll, uh, I'll draft a speech this morning and send it to you at lunchtime, Miss Brooks, for proofreading. Not that you'll find any grammatical errors. Oh, of course not. But correct every one you find. <laughs> oh, uh, one more thing before you go. I'd like some exciting conclusion to the ceremonies I've planned on the campus. Something that would really wind it up in a spectacular manner. Any suggestions, Miss Brooks? Well, you say we're lining up between the cannon and the flagpole? That is correct. Then yes. I think I've got just the idea for you, Mr. Conklin. Oh, what is it, Miss Brooks? Let's shoot Walter Denton out of the cannon. <laughs> Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, will continue in just a moment. But first, here is Vern Smith. Now, proof that brushing teeth right after eating with Colgate Dental Cream helps stop tooth decay before it starts. Continuous research, hundreds of case histories, makes this the most conclusive proof in all dentifrice research on tooth decay. Eminent dental authorities supervised hundreds of college men and women for over two years. One group always brushed their teeth with Colgate's right after eating. The other followed their usual dental care. The group using Colgate Dental Cream as directed, using Colgate's exclusively, showed a startling reduction in average number of cavities, far less tooth decay. The other group developed new cavities at a much higher rate. No other dentifrice offers proof of these results. Modern research shows decay is caused by mouth acids, which are at their worst right after eating. Brushing teeth with Colgate's as directed helps remove acids before they harm enamel. Yes, Colgate's contains all the necessary ingredients, including an exclusive patented ingredient for effective daily dental care. So remember, always use Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay. <laughs> Well, all during...
During my morning classes, I waited for Mr. Conklin's epic essay, What the Board of Education Means to Me. But when the epic didn't arrive at noon, I decided to expose myself to a luncheon invitation from Mr. Boynton and hurried toward the biology laboratory. Just a few doors from my goal, I was intercepted by Madison's athletic giant and mental midget, Stretch Snodgrass. Uh, excuse me, Miss Brooks, but could I see you for a minute? I suppose so, Stretch. What's on your... What's new? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Conklin appointed me messenger of the day. That means I'm supposed to deliver messages. Thanks. What did you want to see me about? Well, Mr. Conklin told me to deliver his Board of Education speech to you during the lunch period. That's why I stopped you just now. Why? I ain't got it. I haven't got it. Oh, I know you ain't got it. <laughs> well, I'm supposed to give it to you. Well, why ain't you got it? <laughs> he ain't give it to me yet. One of us is getting nowhere in my English class. <laughs> now, if you'll excuse me, Stretch. Oh, sure, Miss Brooks. Just leave the speech in Mr. Boynton's lab as soon as Mr. Conklin gives it to you. I've been anticipating this luncheon date for some time. Okay, Miss Brooks. I'm sorry I held you up. That's all right. I didn't mean to take up so much of your time. It's all right, Stretch. I didn't know you were anticipating. So long, Stretch. <laughs> Come in. Well, it's Miss Brooks. I'll be with you in just a minute. I've been trying to correct this biology test paper. It's an essay. Oh? I can hardly make out the name. The writing is so illegible. Let's see here. Could it be Snodgrass? What's the title of the essay? A Man's Best Friends is His Animals. It's Snodgrass, all right. <laughs> hey, listen to this. Lovebirds is very nice pets as they don't never bother nobody hardly, but is all the time busy making love. <laughs> Isn't that terrible? You can't knock it to me. <laughs> well, you ain't the grammar. <laughs> yes, it is pretty bad. And, and here's another paragraph. Baboons is pretty big, and the mandrel is the biggest baboon of all. They make very nice pets, as they don't never bother nobody hardly, but is all the time busy making love. He ought to change the title to an animal's best friend is his animals. <laughs> you can finish that later, Mr. Boynton. Let's go to lunch, huh? Very well, Miss Brooks. Yeah, I hope we run into Walter Denton in the cafeteria. These papers must have fallen out of his briefcase this morning. I'd like to return them. Seems to be an editorial for the school paper. Oh, let's see that. Hmm, What the Board of Education Means to Me by Walter Denton. I'm glad I discovered this in time. The faculty advisor to the paper, Mr. Conklin, would hold me responsible for the most embarrassing incident that ever happened in Madison. What do you mean, Miss Brooks? What's in the editorial? Just a pint or two of Walter's spleen. It's a blast at the board, which I'm going to tear up right now. Yeah, uh, Miss Brooks. Miss Brooks, just a minute. Look what you've done. You, you've torn up Stretch's essay along with the other one. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Boynton. What were you planning to do with it? Send it to the Congressional Library? <laughs> Such deathless prose. Baboons don't never bother nobody hardly, but is all the time busy making love. <laughs> what am I laughing at? It should happen to both of us. <laughs> Mr. Boynton? Oh, I guess they went to lunch. Well, I'll just leave Mr. Conklin's speech on this desk and... Hiya, Stretch. I heard about the ceremonies we're going to have. Yeah, Walter. Mr. Stone's coming down, and we all got to line up and greet him. And boy, is he going to get a greeting. I'm cooking some powder down in the chem lab that I'm going to put in back of the old cannon. And when Mr. Stone gets here, we'll give him a salute that he'll hear till he's 90. <laughs> Do you think Mr. Conklin will like that? He doesn't know about it yet. Uh, what's this on the desk here? Oh, what the Board of Education means to me. Say, I thought I lost this editorial while I was in here this morning. What editorial? Uh, this one. Gee, I'm glad I found it. Miss Brooks was right. This could get me in a lot of trouble. But, Walter, this... This thing is dynamite. I'm going to tear it up right now. But, but you shouldn't. There's mm -hmm. something i got to tell you. Uh, in a minute. Now, what is it, Stretch? That wasn't your editorial you just tore up. It wasn't? No. It was a speech that Mr. Conklin's been sweating out all morning. Huh? <laughs> yeah. He told me to give it to Miss Brooks. But don't worry, Walter. I'm very good at jigsaw puzzles. 
I'll just pick the pieces out of the wastebasket and paste them together again. Oh, gosh. Yeah, I'd better help you. Oh, but the chem lab. I got powder cooking. You better get back there, Walter. This will be easy for me to do honest. You go on back and make some real good explosives. It'll liven the place up a bit. <sighs> I guess I'd better stretch. But whatever you do, get that speech pasted together fast. Okay, pal. Let's see. There's more papers in this basket than I thought. Well... Here's one piece that fits to another. Well, no, it don't either. Well, it almost fits. Oh, it'll be good enough. Walter? Walter Denton? Oh, yes, Miss Brooks. Have you seen Stretch anywhere? I've looked all over the grounds for him. Walter, what are you doing with that cannon? Cannon? Oh, I'm just polishing it, Miss Brooks. I want everything to look spick and span when Mr. Stone gets here. <laughs> well, he better not get here until Stretch shows up with Mr. Conklin's speech. I don't know what we'll do oh, if I don't... there you are, Miss Brooks. Have you finished checking my speech? Uh, not really, Mr. Conklin. What do you mean, not really? I haven't begun. Uh, that is, I haven't begun to enjoy anything as much as I did that speech of yours. Uh, Stretch is carrying it for me. Uh, excuse me, Miss Brooks, but here's the speech. It's right in this folder. Nice timing, Stretch. See, Mr. Conklin, here's your speech. Oh, not a minute too soon. I think this is Mr. Stone's car driving up now. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, 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 attention, everyone. Straighten out those lines. That's right. Now, Miss Brooks, you stand on my left. I'll stand here by the cannon. Uh, get a little closer to the cannon, Mr. Conklin. You <laughs> look stunning together. <laughs> Quiet, Denton. Now remember, when Mr. Stone steps out of the car, I'll count three and we'll all salute him. I certainly will. Ready now? One, two... Walter! What in the world did you put in that cannon? It was just sort of a giant firecracker, Miss Brooks. Wasn't it, Jean? <laughs> Somebody please help me up. <laughs> oh, of course, Mr. Conklin. There you are, sir. Everything all right? There's no reason to be embarrassed. That wasn't Mr. Stone's car. How? I said that wasn't Mr. Stone's car. Don't stand there flapping your lips. Say something. <laughs> can't hear a word you're saying. He was standing so close to the cannon, it must have plugged up his ears. Oh, no. This is terrible, Walter. Uh, what's that? What's that? What did you say? We... <laughs> you can't take him into his office. He seems stunned. Oh, Come on, gang. Three cheers for Mr. Conklin. Yay, Mr. Conklin! Yay, Mr. Conklin! Yay, Mr. Conklin! What's going on here? <laughs> Why is everyone so quiet? <laughs> Poor Mr. Conklin. <laughs> oh, golly, Miss Brooks. You don't think Daddy's hearing will be permanently impaired, do you? Of course not, Harriet. This is just a temporary condition. Shall I say, come in, Mr. Conklin? Eh? What's that? What? Oh, I <laughs> come in. Hi, Miss Brooks. How's Mr. Conklin's hearing? Very bad, Walter. Good. We're going to shoot off the cannon again. But, Walter... Uh, uh, that was Denton, wasn't it? Did he have anything to do with that explosion by the cannon? Oh, I'm sure he didn't, Daddy. I say, I'm sure he didn't, Daddy. That's right, Mr. Conklin. It just exploded. <laughs> I say, it just exploded. It certainly is corroded. <laughs> I, I don't understand what happened. That cannon hasn't been touched since the Spanish-American War. It's absolutely useless. What do you mean, useless? We won, didn't we? <laughs> uh, you're right, you're right. It is unusual for Mr. Stone to be so late. He's quite a busy man, though. Gosh, Miss Brooks, do you think Daddy's hearing is getting any better at all? Come in. <laughs> He's improving by 
by leaps and bounds. <laughs> Harriet, please go out and tell Walter to stop that racket at once. Okay, Miss Brooks. But you'll stay with Daddy, won't you? Certainly, and don't worry about him, Harriet. He's not in any pain. All right, Miss Brooks. See you later, Daddy. Uh, uh, Miss Brooks, when Mr. Stone does get here, I don't want him to think there's anything wrong with my hearing or anything else. If he suspected that a cannon had exploded on school property, he'd go back to the board in a tizzy. I understand, Mr. Conklin, and in view of your condition, I think it might be a good idea if I were to read your speech to him. In view of my condition, it might be a good idea if you were to read my speech to him. Quite an echo in here. (laughs) Now, remember to read the speech slowly, Miss Brooks, and when I see your lips stop moving, I'll make some appropriate comment from time to time. Come in. Well, it's Mr. Stone. How do you do, Miss Brooks? Sorry I'm late, Osgood. It was unavoidable. Well, thank you, Mr. Stone, and a happy new year to you, too. <laughs> I beg your pardon. Uh, Mr. Conklin's a little confused, Mr. Stone. It isn't every day that so distinguished a visitor honors our institution with a visit. Oh, that's very gracious, Miss Brooks. Uh, the speech, Miss Brooks, the speech? Yes, sir. However, Mr. Conklin has prepared a little speech, which I will read to you now. You? But why don't you read it yourself, Osgood? You see, Mr. Stone, he's so choked with emotion, he's speechless. <laughs> <laughs> However, I have it right here. Hmm, nice taste job. It's entitled, What the Board of Education Means to Me by Osgood Conklin. It reads, Few people realize the magnificent efficiency with which our Board of Education functions. This august body is composed of a group of able members, and these baboons grow to a height of four feet. (laughs) What? Every word of this comes from the bottom of my heart. Read on, Miss Brooks. I don't know whether I should, Miss I insist that you do. Oh, well. The members of the Board of Education make very nice pets as they don't never bother nobody but is all the time busy making love. (laughs) What is the meaning of this? Right from the bottom of my heart. (laughs) Now, see here, Conklin. If this is some sort of a joke, I don't like it. Not one bit. Oh, you're too kind, Mr. Stone. (laughs) Hand me that last page, Miss Brooks. But, Mr. Conklin, I wouldn't suggest... Give it here, give it here, give it here. Uh, To sum up, I would like to read what I have written in this last paragraph. To wit, having observed Mr. Stone's educational methods, I am convinced that his outstanding talent is his ability to eat bananas while hanging by his tail. (laughs) Believe me, Mr. Stone, these sentiments are dictated by a sense. Eat bananas while hanging by his tail! <laughs> the man has obviously taken leave of his senses. But, sir, if they let me... And when they return, this matter will be thoroughly investigated. Good day, Miss Brooks. Miss Brooks, this speech, this isn't the speech I wrote. I know it now, Mr. Conklin, but I didn't... I hold you responsible for this entire fiasco. And believe me, Miss Brooks, you have no idea how severe your punishment is going to be. Oh, yes, I have, Mr. Conklin. Miss Brooks, where are you going? Out to get some bananas. There's nothing like hanging by your tail from a flagpole to whip up an appetite. As our Miss Brooks returns in just a moment, but first, dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl. Tonight, yes, tonight, show him how much lovelier your hair can look after a luster cream shampoo. Luster cream, world's finest shampoo. No other shampoo in the world gives Kay Dumas magic blend of secret ingredients plus gentle lanolin. Not a soap, not a liquid. Luster Cream Shampoo leaves hair three ways lovelier. Fragrantly clean, free of loose dandruff, glistening with sheen, soft, manageable. Even in hardest water, Luster Cream lathers instantly. No special rinse needed after a Luster Cream Shampoo. 
so gentle, luster cream is wonderful even for children's hair. Tonight, yes, tonight, try luster cream shampoo. Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl. You owe your crowning glory to a luster cream shampoo. And now, once again, here is our Miss Brooks. Well, even after he had read a written confession from Walter and Stretch, Mr. Conklin still blamed me for the day's misadventures. Accordingly, he ordered me to write a brand new speech for him that same afternoon. I wouldn't have minded that so much, but it meant breaking one of my rare dates with Mr. Boynton. I was complaining about it as we walked down the hall after school. Oh, it does sound unfair, Miss Brooks, but after all, Mr. Conklin's the boss. What can you do about it? Well, I could go into his office and tell him off, I suppose. But that wouldn't do any good either. He can't hear a word. Wait a minute. Maybe these are the ideal conditions. A chance to say all the things I've ever wanted to say to Mr. Conklin right to his face. Well, do you, do you think that's wise, Miss Brooks? I don't know how wise it is, but it'll certainly do my little heart good. Excuse me, Miss Brooks. I've got to take this aspirin into Daddy. Oh, let me take it, Harriet. There's something I'd like to say to him. He's still pretty upset, Miss Brooks. Maybe I'd better see him alone first. All right, Harriet. Here's your aspirin, Daddy, and a glass of water. See? Water? Drink? Stop gibbering, girl. I can hear you distinctly. You can? Yes, yes. It happened just a moment ago. My head cleared and my hearing is perfectly normal. How wonderful. Oh, Daddy, Miss Brooks is waiting to see you. May I send her in? Very well. Daddy, we'll see you now, Miss Brooks. Oh, goody. See you tomorrow. All right, Harriet. Well, Miss Brooks? I just wanted to talk to you about my having to stay in this afternoon, you inconsiderate, maladjusted, subhuman tyrant. <laughs> what? I've got some things to tell you that I've been saving up for years, and it's going to be a great pleasure to coo them into your dainty, plugged-up ears. <laughs> eh? <laughs> How does that go again? Of all the puffed-up, overstuffed, pompous windbags I've ever met, you take the marble cake, Marblehead. <laughs> eh? Rather than try to talk some sense into that advocated, mule-brained little head of yours, I'll do the work this afternoon. Does that make you happy, you beady-eyed, beetle-browed old buzzard? <laughs> Yes, Miss Brooks, that makes me very happy. Good. And I just want to say, boing! <laughs> you can hear. Yes. <laughs> From the moment you entered this office, you'll be pleased to know that this overstuffed windbag has absorbed your every word. You realize, of course, Miss Brooks, that any chastisement you have suffered in the past is mere child's play compared with what's in store for you now? How? Hey? I will not only see to it that our local board of education receives... Must be contagious. Can't seem to hear a single word you're saying. It's over three but hours ago that the well cannon went off. Here I am suddenly taking stone <laughs> Well, I guess there's no sense in worrying about it. I'll just relax and work. Brooks Show brought to you by Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair and Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay. Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, is produced by Larry Burns, directed by Al Lewis, with music by Wilbur Hatch. Be beauty wise, get bath size palm olive soap for beauty care all over. Yes, for your tub or shower, enjoy the same glorious beauty lather that millions of women have found so wonderful in bringing lovelier complexions in just 14 days. Simply buy the big, thrifty, long-lasting bath size palm olive. Use it for your palm olive soap facials. Enjoy its oceans of creamy, beautifying lather in your tub or shower. And say, men love it too. So let the whole family enjoy 
bath size palm olive. Yes, be beauty wise, get bath size palm olive soap today. Be with us again next week at the same time for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks. Bob Lamont speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.